has been an amazing mentor to me for over six years. Um, he's dear to my heart. He leads. I mean, he is powerful. He has done it. He is so knowledgeable. And um, this gentleman walks the walks. So, you know, there's a lot of people that talk. Well, this gentleman really walks the walk. So it's my privilege, my honor. Fun, witty, loving, handsome, all of it, you guys. He is the package. So um, with my full heart, Michael Zadvia, take it away. Annabelle, if we can go back in time, I would have married you. Annabelle. I'm just telling you. Annabelle we would have we would have definitely Annabelle Restrepo. Oh my God. Imagine having a woman in your corner for the gentleman on the screen that every morning you wake up and she said those things to you. You'd be able to conquer every single day. Oh my God, Annabelle, I love you. So I, I appreciate you, that. Man. Guys, I'm on my way. Yeah, I love you, Annabelle. And you're really cute, Thank too, by you. the way. Um, you're very welcome. And I got Suzanne Kitchens by my side this morning, too. I feel like I'm protected by these two powerful ladies. Um, they joined in here about 10 minutes early with with me to make sure that we had everything set up today. I got a little bit of a late start today. I have an hour of commute every single day. Um, got a little bit of a late start. I decided that I would just take this call from the road. <laughs> I'll stay focused. It's a very easy drive for me. I've got some things I want to share with you all this morning. Um, starting with, we have we have some new faces on the screen here. You guys might look around and see some new beautiful faces, some powerful people on the screen. I had the pleasure uh, last week, if you guys remember, there was a, a young lady by the name of Angie Rash. You guys remember that name? She was one yeah. of our guests that Colette invited to the call. And uh, Angie's hit BP already with Transact Card, and she is from another organization inside of Transact Card. But she was just such a pleasure to meet and work with on that call, especially last week, that we ended up jumping offline and having a couple of conversations and built a little bit of friendship. Annabelle, can you um, uh, reduce that background noise? I think we got somebody that's got a little noise back okay. there. I would just want, um, I want to record this. So whoever has a uh, host, I can't record it on my side. I really want to record this. So oh, it's, re somebody it's turn recorded. On the record? I've done it. I've done it. Okay, yeah, wonderful. We got, Susan got that covered. We got it covered. But anyways, to, um, you know, this is a great industry. I love this industry. I want to I wanna open up today's Zoom by that. I, I couldn't imagine not being a part of a network marketing program. I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my 21-year career is – I took breaks from the industry. You're with a company. The company doesn't make it, doesn't work out. And then I kind of had one of those, I hate this industry. And, and then I would go a length of time without growing. And then really, that's what it boils down to. Because when we get together here on Saturday mornings, I hope you guys know that this is a powerful mastermind that we put together every single Saturday morning. This is a think tank. This is where you get to come and learn and come and grow. And the things that we share on these Zooms, if they taught this stuff in college, the tuition would be a quarter million dollars a year to learn this stuff. I really mean that. Quarter million dollars a year to learn this kind of mindset and skill set and paradigms that we share. <clears throat> but I love the business and I, and I love it for reasons like the one I'm speaking with you all about today. You know, meeting someone like an Angie Rash, this woman is woman's amazing. And how the heck would I meet Angie Rash if it wasn't for network marketing, if it wasn't for this industry? The truth is, I wouldn't. How would we meet someone like Suzanne Kitchens? You know, this woman is, is powerful beyond measure. She's polished. She's she's successful. She's look. I mean, just take one look at her with those dark rim glasses. And she always shows up dressed for success and has a nice background. I mean, it's just a pleasure to to be a part of this type of a business. And I don't know any other business in the world where we get to do these kinds of things. And I don't know any other business in the world where you get to meet amazing people. Um, and I've said it time and time again, and I'll say it again. Meeting new people is the spice of life. Meeting new people is the spice of life. If you pull nothing else from today's teaching today, just know that your, your life becomes richer when you meet new people. And that's why I encourage each and every one of you to go out there and start to plant your roots and build your network and build your business. 
because the relationships that you make along the way are priceless. They're priceless. Now, the money that you can make in a business like this is astronomical. It, it should be illegal. Sometimes it is illegal in this industry. You got to stay away from those companies. But it, it should be illegal with the kind of income that you can make in a great network marketing program like what we have here. And I believe those checks are coming. And I believe we have a chance to make rock star income here. Like MTV Cribs. Can I still say MTV Cribs? Is that no longer a thing? Is there still an MTV Cribs, Esther? I don't even know. But anyways, I meet Angie Rush. She texted me the other day and Suzanne Kitchens and I had a little group meeting with her team on Thursday night, 6 p.m. my time. And Angie texted me and said, Michael, can you jump on a Zoom at 6 p.m.? I said, Angie, I can't. I'm already booked with Suzanne. She said, well, I'll be with my team for an hour and a half and I would really like to invite you to join me. <coughs> One thing about me, guys, I have a really hard time saying no. My whole life, I have a hard time saying no to amazing people that say, can you help me? So I did. I jumped on the call and I got to tell you, Angie was on there with about 20 plus of her partners. Every single one of them was a clone of her. One just as amazing as she was. And just remember, like attracts like. When you find an amazing person, amazing people don't hang out with a bunch of duds. They hang out with a bunch of studs. And I know that's the wrong term for a female, calling a female a stud. But I guess a female could be a stud. But Angie's a stud, and she attracted a lot of powerful women. And some of them are here with us today. Cassie is one of them. Um, another one that is with us today. Uh, Angie, are you with me right now? Can you hear me? You can unmute. Yes, yes, I am here. Angie, who did you invite to the call today that we talked about last night? So I have Cassie and Regina and Tammy and uh, Denise, um, uh, Clemente, um, Amy, <coughs> and um, I, I apologize if I, if I forgot anybody else, but I, th I think that's that's who I have. Um, uh, Trisha, I'm not sure if Trisha is here, uh, but... Um, yeah, I've, I've got some rock stars. I've got some leaders. And so um, I invited yeah. them here tonight. So thank you so much for, for allowing us to come. Yeah, and who is the young lady that you invited who is basically an orphan in this company that needs leadership? Oh, Sarah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to see if she's yeah. on here. Yes. She's here. I, I saw her earlier. So we have somebody that joined us this morning. And I want to talk about this because I... I think it's important for you all to hear this. We've got somebody in Transact Card, believe it or not, she does not have any leadership whatsoever. She sent me a beautiful message yesterday and said, Michael, I've been working with Angie, but she's not um, and she's not my up team. She's not my power team. The people that brought me in, they're nowhere to be found, basically nowhere to be found. So what do you do in a network marketing company when you join and you're not fortunate to have a Z team? What do you do? you got to go out there and find a way, don't you? Now, I want to say this. When I got in this industry, I didn't have a team. I didn't have a team above me. I didn't have a leader that sponsored me. I lived and died by this expression. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with you. I want you to make sure you file this, write it down, and teach it to other people. If it is to be, it's up to me. If it is to be, it's up to me. You know, I got I got tired over the years of hearing people say to me, well, I wasn't successful because the person who sponsored me didn't help me. Ugh, I want to puke when I hear people say that. Here's a little fact for each and every one of you on the screen right now. We have about 2,000 plus people on our team. Yet, Suzanne, do me a favor. How many people do you see on the screen right now? So right now we have 51. 51 out of 2,000. We're not batting a thousand, are we, folks? Here's what I'm getting at. Out of 2,000 people, where the hell are the other 1,949 people? Somebody explain to me what happened to the other 1,900. Christy Mattoon, where the heck are the other 1,900 people? Guess what? Welcome to network marketing. <laughs> this is not a business where everybody does it. I mean, I got to be honest with all of you. More than half the people that signed up for Transact Card at this point signed up because their friend called them with a lot of enthusiasm saying, you need to sign up for this thing and get this card. Otherwise, you're not going to be a founder. 
And the person said, oh, no, I need to be a founder. And they gave them their credit card and they signed up. From there, they've done absolutely nothing with the business. Does that make sense, Suzanne Kitchens? It doesn't make sense, but is it the truth that a lot of people just came in because someone hyped them into the business? Absolutely. So guess, but guess what I don't do? I don't hype people into the business. When I bring somebody to the business, I let them know this is a business. We're going to gather twice a week on Zoom. You're going to build a local team in your town. I'm going to build a local team in my town. Can't wait, by the way. We're going to have meetings. We're going to run this like a big business. So let me get to my next point that I want to teach you so you can teach others. This is big business. Big business. This business doesn't make sense. I'll get to that in a second. But this is big business. <clears throat> you know, the biggest mistake people make in this business is they waste time with the wrong people. Write that in your notes. Don't waste time with the wrong people. I was teaching Angie Rash this the other night. Man, I poured into Angie the other day. She's not on my team. I won't make a dollar from Angie Rash. I don't care. Sarah, who just joined us and joined our team to be a part of this. Sarah, I hope your story one day is nobody was there to help me, but then I found a group of people that would open their doors and let me in. Does everyone feel good about helping somebody even though you won't get credit for it? So write this in your notes. It's amazing what you can accomplish in life when you don't care who gets the credit. It's amazing what a team can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. These things I share with you are called power quotes. These are the things that are the fabric in my mind that makes network marketing make sense. It's almost like scripture for you Bible thumpers out there, for you Bible believers and readers out there. In my 21 years, I've basically created an entire Bible around network marketing with power quotes and acronyms that keep it together for me. But it really is amazing what you can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. It's really amazing what can happen for you when you stop thinking about you and you just start thinking about others. You enroll somebody. Write this down. That's when the work begins. Oh, it's my favorite thing to teach. When you get someone to join, that's not the hard part. That's the easy part. The work begins when you enroll somebody in the business. That's when you need to be the best darn mentor you can possibly be. Now, I got a question for the 51 of you. Are you ready to be the best darn mentor that you can be? It's not good enough to just sign somebody up in this business. You got to be there for that person. You got to set goals with that person. You got to make a plan with that person. You got to encourage that person. You got to empower that person. You've got to teach that person. That's why it's so important to be here Saturday mornings. What the heck are you going to teach them if you don't know what you're doing? You come here to learn what to do and learn the stuff that you need to teach so that one day somebody says to you, oh, my God, that was the greatest call I've ever been on. Thank you so much for your time. The things I teach are, are the things that I've learned. Amazing. So had that great. God, I got my butt warmers on in my truck right now. They, they should make these butt warmers illegal. My butt's on fire. I think there's going to be a fire happening here in my truck. I got a beautiful truck. I love this truck. It's the greatest thing I ever bought myself. If it wasn't for my mindset in life, I'd be driving a normal truck, but I bought this beautiful truck. And I don't say this to brag, but my truck, truck has white leather seats. Not smart when you're a father of a seven-year-old, but I'll deal with the magic marker on these seats in a couple of weeks, I'm sure. But anyways, these butt warmers are insane. Esther knows she's been in this truck. I got to put the butt coolers on. Now, give me a second. Okay, the coolers are on. Now I got ventilated seats because you got to cool your butt down when it gets too hot. All right. So, anyway, the work begins after you join. The work begins after you join. What the heck does that mean? What does that mean? I thought we we're supposed to just sign people up for a card, Suzanne. Aren't we supposed to just sign a bunch of people up for a card? Nope. Here, here's the truth. We're not a part of we're not a part of a transact card business or a debit card business. We're in the people business. And when you when you finally get what this industry is all about, it becomes so easy to build a network. You couldn't even imagine how easy it is. It's on just helping people, teaching people, and serving people. 
versus signing people, enrolling people, convincing people, which most people think. Then this business becomes nothing more than you just being a friend maker every single day. Ask the right questions. Hey, I got this group of people I hang out with. They're all powerful people. We're on the move with this company. It's going to be so wildly successful. Do you keep your options open? Or are you happy with your current nine to five where you work every single day to make a check in order to get paid X amount of dollars at the end of the week, just so you're forced to go back next week? Is that your lifestyle? So <clears throat> anyway, the work begins after you join. And I want to talk about the work for all of us, the 51 of us, or if there's more now, great. But the 51 of us that are here, the 51 of us are going to make this company go to a billion dollars in sales, not the 1,945. The leaders are what make companies grow. You on the screen are the leader. And here's a little story I'm going to share with you because it's better if I share this as a story versus tell it to you the way my mentor told it to me. I'm going to do a little both because I want you guys to experience both. I've talked about this on a previous call, but it's been on my mind all week long. My mentor said to me when I first met him, he said, Michael, he said, do you want me to be your mentor? I said, yes, I do. He said to me, are you willing to do everything I ask you to do? I said, yes, I am. I said, he looked at me and goes, are you sure about that? I said, yes, I am. I said, Richard, I'll do whatever it takes. How many of you on the screen will do whatever it takes to build a business with Transact Card to make sure that two years from now, you don't have to work if you don't want to work. Anybody get excited about that, first of all? Good. I see some heads nodding. Patricia Bowman's nodding, and Suzanne's nodding, and I see Annabelle nodding. Two years. He looked at me and said, Michael, you give me two years of your life, and I can't make you any promises, so I'll say the same to you. I can't make any promises but you'll be successful beyond your wildest dreams. You'll be in a position where you only work if you want to work and you'll have the freedom to do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. Sound good to anybody? You see, I believed him, Cassie. I believed him, Angie. You know why? I was sitting in the house of a man that was roughly 13,000 square feet I was sitting in the basement of his house. I'm going to paint a little picture for you. You're talking to a guy right now who sat with one of the legends, not for days, weeks, months, years. I sat with one of the legends in this industry. So guess what I could do? In that moment, I could bet my life on it that this industry works. Write that down in your notes. This industry works. And you know what? I will say this to all of you. It took me sitting with a legend in a mansion of a house that was paid for by the network marketing industry for me to say, I believe. Hopefully it takes you sitting with someone like me who's made millions, who's been wildly successful, who was mentored by that man to say to yourself, I believe. The greatest question I can ask each and every one of you is, do you believe? Do you believe? When you believe in this thing and you believe in yourself and you believe in the team and you believe in the company and the product and the opportunity in front of you, it's then and only then that you will <coughs> put out the energy to succeed. Trust me when I tell you, <coughs> it is that belief that will get people to listen to you. And Richard said this to me, he said, Michael, and I'm going to say this to you, I've got three demands. Uh, how many people just cringed when I said the word commands? Oh, man, we are so independent, are we? we? Oh, no, 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 no. I get to make my own schedule. I've got the, uh-uh, nope, nobody puts demands on me. Uh-uh. But Richard looked at me. He said, do you want to work with me? I said, yes. I got three demands. And the conversation got real serious. And um, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I was a little bit nervous. If anyone gets to know me, nobody demands anything of me. Uh -uh. I don't answer. I answer to one being in this world. That's it. No offense to my mother. I don't answer to her. No offense to my general manager at the job I work at now. I don't answer to him. I don't answer to anybody. I hope there's a lot of people on the screen 
independent mind thinking like me. I don't answer to anybody. I'm my own boss, and I've got a greater power than I answer to. Other than that, no offense to all of you, I don't answer to any of you either. I don't answer to people. I got into this world, I said, I'm going to make my own life and design my own life, and nobody's going to be my boss. I hate the word boss. That word boss drives me absolutely insane. Nobody's the boss of you, Suzanne. Nobody. You run your life. <laughs> but he said, I got three demands. He said, Michael, and here's the best part about Richard. Oh, he, he was the mentor. He didn't have to do any of this. He just told me what to do. I was like, wow, this guy's got a great position, doesn't he? He said, you're going to have a meeting once a week, an opportunity meeting. You're going to pick a house, a restaurant. I don't care where you, I don't care if you do it in the back of an alley. He said, but from this moment forward, you're going to do a once a week meeting. He said to me, your team, which I didn't have a team at the time, your team needs to count on you to be there every single week. And he alluded to the fact that, Michael, the job you're about to do is harder than any other job. He said, I need you to know what I'm asking you to do is not easy. He said, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's going to be packed with disappointment. But you're having a meeting once a week. Come hell or high water, there's going to be a meeting and you're going to be there. And you're going to invite people and you're going to have your team there. I said, will you do that? I said, yes, sir. I hope you guys are writing this down. Number two, he said, you're going to have a powwow every single week. Wow, we're doing it right now, guys. He said, every week you're going to come together with your team. Now, guys, you got to keep in mind, this was 20 years ago where we didn't have the ability to meet on Zoom like we do now. We technically did because we were a technology company with this same technology. However, it wasn't working very good back then. So we need to lean on the old school way to build a business, which I'm glad we did. He said, you're going to get together every Saturday with your team. He goes, and when you get together, I want you to make it fun. He goes, you're a really fun guy, aren't you? I go, yeah, I am fun. I love to smile, laugh, have fun, play games, eat food, party. I love to be with my friends. He goes, good. You're going to need to be that guy for your team. He goes, you're going to gather once a week on a Saturday. He goes, eh, make it fun and do a potluck with your team. Have everyone bring a dish. Well, it was wonderful because we had people from all different ethnicities eventually. So we'd have a Filipino dish, an Italian dish, a Mexican dish, an uh, Asian dish, a, a Japanese dish. It was amazing. I mean, the food alone was worth building the business. And every Saturday we'd get together and the ladies would get together and make their sweets and their dishes. And the guys would do the best they can to bring cups and drinks and ice like the guys do. You guys know ladies are better at networking than, than men, right? I mean, let's call a spade a spade. I'm, Looking at the screen, I only see one guy on the screen right now. It's Mark Langley. Oh, wait, Tommy's down there too. But let's face it. Here's a tip for everybody. You want to build a massive business? Enroll a lot of women in your organization. See, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm pretty smart. I knew I had to surround myself with women and beautiful women. And that's what I've done my whole career. <clears throat> I always surrounded myself with amazing, beautiful women. And I mean beautiful on the inside as well as the outside. And we'd get together and say, I go, Richard, what do I do on Saturday? He goes, I need you to teach people what I teach you. I said, okay. And in the beginning, I didn't have a lot to teach. I didn't know a lot. But I went into those meetings, and I did the best I could. Can you do the best you can? That's all we ask you to do. Do the best you can. Can you be the best you you can be? Of course you can. We all can. So he said, I need you to have that weekly training, teaching. He goes, every time you do that teaching, and I'm blowing it right here with all of you because I'm not following the system, at the beginning of the teaching, I need you to do a little presentation for everyone about Transact Card. Suzanne, take down a note right now, if you will, be so kind. We need to do a little five-minute overview at the top of every training because we never want to miss the opportunity for new people to hear the presentation again, even if it's five minutes long. At the top of every powwow, we need to introduce Transact Card to the new guests on the screen. Heck, some of you might invite somebody five minutes before the presentation who just wants to be on and they don't even know what transact card is shame on us for not doing a little presentation for everybody yes let's start changing that on this powwow every saturday morning we're gonna do a little five minute overview as to who is transact card and who is the z team not a full presentation where it's going to eat up for an hour because we need this hour to learn and grow lastly can everyone here and see me okay yes thanks Suzanne. If I break up, guys, I'll, I'll be right back. It, sometimes this ride, I break up in a couple spots. Suzanne, you'll let me know if I break up. 
Um, lastly, he said, Michael, he said, every year, company's going to do a big event. I need you there. And I need you with your whole team. And he said, can you do those three things for me? Now watch this. I want you all to pay close attention to this. This was the, the bulk of the phone call today. I want to make it crystal clear with all of you because this is what made me successful. Are you willing to do those three things? I said, yes, sir. He goes, Michael, I, li I like you a lot. Said, You're a little rough around the edges. That's what he said to me back then. I'm probably still a little rough around the edges. Let's, let's uh, call a spade a spade here. I don't think anyone's perfect. He said, you're a little rough around the edges, but I believe in you. That meant the world to me. But my mentor said he believed in me. It meant the world to me. And he said, if you fail to do any one of those three things, I just want to let you know, I'll always love you. He said it like this. I'll always love you. But you know how there's 168 hours in a week? And I said, yeah. He said, you failed to do those two simple things, which take up, what, about two, three hours of your week? Those other 165 hours, you don't have Richard Call. And I said, what? He said, if you don't do the weekly meeting and be the leader that I know you can be, and you don't do the training, teaching, and you don't come to the, the company events, I can't work with you the other 165 hours a week. I will not mentor you, is what he said to me. And guys, it scared the daylights out of me to lose him as a mentor. So I'm going to tell you what I did and what I hope you do. I made him proud. I had that first meeting that Tuesday night, and there were seven people there. And I called him at the end of the meeting, and I told him what happened. And he said, good job. And I asked him what to do next. He goes, Trey, you got to have a teaching Saturday. Get them together again. And I did it Saturday. And guess what I did at the end of the meeting? I called him again. And then the next week, we did another meeting, and I called him again. And next week, I did another meeting, called him again. And in 12 months, guess what I did every single week? I called him every time. Annabelle, every time my mentor helped me, he got a thank you from me within seconds. A phone call. Richard, thanks for joining that meeting. He would jump on a, a video like this sometimes and say, hey, how you doing, everybody? Well, hey, Michael, how's it going? Hey, how many people you got in that living room there, young man? Say, about 25. Oh, good. Hey, guys, my name's Richard Call. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. He'd be off the, the video in five minutes. When the meeting was over, I called him again. Within 12 months, I went from broke kid from Buffalo, New York, who failed at every single thing in his life. I failed at acting. I failed at music. In my mind, I was a complete failure. And after 12 months of building a business, I had 13,000 people in my network. My check was over $100,000 a month. And I made it. I did it. I did it. I really, really did it. For the first time in my life, in my mind, I made something of myself. So I always say, thank God for network marketing. And thank God for my mentor, because without him, I would have surely failed. Guys, I can't even tell you how many times I wanted to quit. Cassie, as I'm looking at you, can't even tell you how many times I wanted to quit. And I'm going to give you the advice he gave me that kept me going. He said, Michael, you want the secret to this business? Yes, sir. Sign up. Don't quit. That was it. Listen, some of you on the screen right now might be saying to yourself, this stuff is really simple. When's this guy going to teach us the good stuff? Nope. I'm teaching you the good stuff. No, no, no. But when's he going to teach me what to say to my, my best friend and how to prospect him? That's easy. We'll get to that. We cover everything on these Saturday calls. Don't we, Suzanne? Everything. But I figured if I'm going to cover something this morning, I'm going to cover the most important thing. So let me shift speeds right now. <coughs> we live in a different world, don't we? 2024. Seems like it's a lot different than it was 21 years ago. I'm getting a little bit longer in the tooth now. I'm getting a little bit grayer in the hair now. 
I'm not that spring chicken I was 20 years ago. Amazing how fast time goes. For the young people on this team and on this screen, it goes fast. Make the most of it. Please make the most of it. Don't waste time. Don't waste a day. Whatever you do, don't waste three days. Three days is 1% of the year. I don't know if you look at life the way I do, but if I miss three days, I just lost a percent of the year. I don't like losing a percent of the year. I like to make things happen. But I want to acknowledge the fact that things have changed since my mentor mentored me. And we got this video thing where we all can be connected, but this doesn't feel like we're together right now, in my opinion. I can see your little faces on the screen, but you guys got some really small faces. Like your heads are really small. I'm not used to working with people with such small heads and little hairdos. Like, how do you curl your hair with a toothpick with the size of your hair on the screen right now? Like, I don't understand how you people do it. Some of you got the tiniest glasses like Patricia. Here's what I'm getting at. Zoom is great. And we are so blessed to have a technology where I can look at Regina and Sarah and Donna from the neck up. I can look at Laura Pavey and and Valentine. I, I love this team, by the way. I've gotten to know all of you just by putting your names on a envelope and seeing you once a week. But yeah, the world has changed and technology is changing. And now we've got AI, which makes me want to puke all over myself, thinking about artificial intelligence, having conversations for me on behalf of me. I get it's the future, but man, it's a future where we're just going to further disconnect human beings. And here's what I believe. I believe that as much as this world has changed, it stayed the same. I believe that building the business in person is truly the only way to build the business. But I believe that we use the tools, the technology, to do like what we're doing right now, to leverage the ability to be together as close as we can be without being there in person. But I want to encourage all of us, including myself, to do one thing. Plug into this system right here. I'm asking you. I got three demands on behalf of this team. And once again, the demands don't mean you have to do it. It just means that if you want to work directly with myself and Colette, and I want to extend this to Suzanne and Mark and Steve and all the leaders on this team, Trish, Jeff, there's too many leaders for me to mention all your names. So don't be mad if I forgot one of you because we got a ton of leaders here. But I want to extend this on behalf of the leadership here. And I only want to do this because I want you all to be successful. I hope you get that. I only want to do this because I want us to be successful. And if you don't build this the way that I'm teaching you, Right now, you might be able to grow a business, but it'll never stick. It'll never be sticky. Angie and Sarah, the two women who are joining us today, oh, no, they come from an organization right now that doesn't build it the way that we do. Why do you think they're here with us right now? Because they love the way that we build it. Because we love and care and we teach and help. And we put a system in place to make sure nobody slips through the cracks. Whereas other leaders in this industry say, I'll do a Zoom once a month for three hours. Make sure you jump on and, oh, by the way, you can't interact with me. You just got to listen and learn and go do your thing. That's not how I build a business. not how I was taught. I got to be hands-on. So here's what we ask of, of all of us, the demands on, on you to build this business, if you want the support of the leaders that are working with you. And I'm coaching all the leaders on this team to only work with the people who plug in and do this the right way because otherwise you'll waste time with a lot of people. And I don't want to see Suzanne waste a lot of time. I don't want to see Annabelle waste her time. I want to see her work with people that get it. And getting it is understanding what you need to do to build a real business. So we have a once a week Zoom. We're asking you to be there on Wednesday night. We should go from 51 and the numbers should grow from here. We have a once a week teaching. We do that on Saturday morning. You're here. Congratulations. We're asking you to be here. And we're asking you to be present with your camera on, please. I mean, I got to have mine on. It would be nice if you had yours on. I got to have my volume clear and I got to have my video clear, whether I'm driving in the car or sitting down at a desk, I'm here with you. One half of this presentation this morning is me presenting to you. The other half of the presentation is you participating with me, whether that mean, means a slight head nod, which I'm getting from Annabelle, or it just means you smiling. I don't care what it means. It's all about participating and being a part of the experience together. You want to get the most out of it? Be present. Be with us. Please, we ask you to. We won't beg you. We're just going to ask. 
And then when this company does a major event or there's a major event in your city, be there with your team. And the reason why I told you my story of how I listened to my mentor and I did everything he asked me to do is at the end of the year, folks, I was a millionaire. One year of my life, millionaire. Unbelievable. I still think about it to this day. I'm like, oh, my God, did I really do that? I did. And I don't throw that word around millionaire to impress anybody on the screen. Because quite frankly, a million dollars isn't a lot of money anymore. But it's a hell of an accomplishment. Would you agree? That year I made $791,000. I couldn't believe it. I also couldn't believe how much Uncle Sam took from me. So when I thought I was a millionaire, I fell way short because he sticks his big paws in there and takes a huge chunk of your cash just so you guys are ready for this. Trust me, Uncle Sam, he's not your favorite uncle. He's going to take a lot of your money. He's a piece of garbage, if you ask me, but I don't want to get political with all of you. So can you plug in once a week and take it a step further? Can you build this in your backyard? Can you do it? I know you can do it. I want you to say to yourself, yes, I can do it. Can you start to get a meeting together in your city and get a weekly teaching together in your city? Now, wait a second, Michael. What am I supposed to do when all of a sudden I build a business in my backyard? And then I can't be on a Saturday Zoom. You told me I need to be on a Zoom. You've got my permission to not be on this Zoom if you build this in your backyard. You know why? Because you're going to be teaching all this stuff yourself. You might come back to the Zoom to learn some more stuff because you weren't here and you want to add to your teaching repertoire and then go take that to your organization next Saturday in your living room, in a restaurant. I already picked out the restaurant I'm going to be working from here in Santa Fe. It's called Rudy's. It's a barbecue house. And it's massive. And they got a private room, which I've been there a hundred times. And there's never been one person in the private room. So I've already made that private room, my meeting room for my Santa Fe team. And I can't wait to start building locally. I'll always make sure that I'm here to support this team. So I won't do meetings that will interrupt or coincide with the meetings we do here. Because I want to make sure that this team is always fed globally. But locally, I got to build a team. And I'm going to tell you one reason why you want to build a team instead of got to build a team. You want to build a team locally because that's when the fun happens. And write this down. That's when the magic happens. The magic happens when you build a local team. And you see it grow from two people to four people. From four to eight, eight to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64. You know when it gets exciting, when you look around your meeting space and say, we don't have enough room for next week's meeting. Oh, my God. Then it gets fun. And then next week's meeting, you have to go find a hotel room that will fit 75 people. And then all of a sudden, you start doing hotel meetings. And you look around the room and you say, we don't have enough room in this little room. we got to find a bigger room. And then it gets to a point where you got a couple hundred people to 300 people a week meeting every Thursday and every Saturday. And I don't say this to you out of theory. I've done it and it's exhilarating. And you deserve to experience that feeling of leading and changing the lives of lots of people. And if we're going to build this transact card thing, I think we should build it the right way. Don't you? And that's the right way. So I know this sounds old school to some of you on the screen, and some of you pay attention to all these things that come across Facebook. We will build your downline for you. All you got to do is pay us $900 a month and we'll build it for you. Hey, guess what? That's not network marketing. And here's another clue. If you ever hear someone in network marketing use the word downline, I use it as an example there. They're network marketers. Downline is the ugliest word in the language. Downline means Suzanne's in my downline. How degrading is that to say that about to Suzanne Kitchens? No, when I talk about my partners, every one of you, Suzanne's my partner. We're building this together. She's one of the top leaders. And I never make myself above her. That's a lesson for all of you. Nobody is on your team. Be careful of the pronouns that you use and the words that you use. Let me introduce you to Annabelle Restrepo. She's on my team. Ooh, never say that. Never take ownership of a human being. They will resent you for it. Patricia Bowman is my partner. She is a leader. We are Z-team leaders. 
elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder. We're building this thing together. I don't care if you fall a thousand levels away from me in the tree. I don't care about the tree. Just so you know, I never look at the tree. I haven't looked at the tree more than once. I looked one time when Colette asked me to look at it. That's the last time I looked at the tree. I don't care about the stupid tree. Everyone's a partner. Everyone's equal. We're all together in this thing. Together, we achieve more. Team, together, everyone achieves more. So quick little tip for all of you when you're talking about your partners to other people. In your mind, they might be your partners. But out there in the world, you are shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, neck and neck. You're in this together. Never put yourself above another human being <clears throat> in this business. I hear it all the time. I hear people say it all the time, and it makes me cringe. It's like fingernails on the chalkboard. <clears throat> oh, let me introduce you to Susan. She's one of my top leaders. Well, don't you feel so big about yourself this afternoon? Wow, she's one of your top leaders. Oh, you had everything to do with Suzanne being a top leader, didn't you? Don't be so full of yourself. You didn't do that. Suzanne showed up fully equipped to build a massive business. What's up, Daryl? Thank you, brother. One of my coworkers next to me in the car. Um, so anyway, guys, it's 943. I covered just about everything I was thinking about last night. I hope you guys get something out of this Zoom. I hope you take the advice seriously. Just remember, if it is to be, it's up to me. Remember that if you don't put demands on yourself, your team will never follow anything. If you don't have a system and a team to plug into, what do you really have? You have nothing. Unless you get lucky one day and happen to find somebody out of the blue who has all the skills to do what we're doing here, and then they do it in your organization, and then you sit back and benefit from that one leader who knew what they were doing, going out and building a business. But guess what? You don't want to be the person who sits back and got lucky in network marketing. First of all, you're going to have to get lucky a lot because you need more than one leg with a president or a vice president in it. But you always, so I'll end with this. You always want to be the one. I, uh, it's funny, Cassie left me a message yesterday and was telling me about this woman she knows from New Skin. She was on our Zoom last week, and she interpreted what I said last week in an interesting way. I'll use Cassie as an example. I'm going to look at Cassie while I'm telling this story. And in her message to me, she said, Michael, I think I know the one. You were talking about the one last week, and I know this woman in New Skin, and she's a big leader, and, oh, if I could just get her signed up on the team – Oh, I think I found my one. And Cassie, you're right. If you can get a big leader to join the team, then you might have found your one. But let me challenge you to be the one instead of find the one. You see what happens, and I'll get a little bit unglued with you for the last few minutes here and passionate with you because I love talking about this. If you make the decision right now in your life to be the one, your life changes. What happens when you say, I'm the one, I'm the leader. I'm the one that's going to start the weekly meeting. I'm the one that's going to organize the teachings. I'm going to start doing the teachings. I'm going to do this. I know for some of you, this sounds terrifying. Oh my God, this guy's asking me to do a meeting in my backyard. I, don't, I can't do it. You might not be the one. You might not be the one. I hope I got 51 people say to themselves, you're darn right I'm the one. But when you say, I'm going to do it, I'm not going to lean on anybody else to do this. I'm going to grab this and take this horn and run with it myself. And you do those things and you just stay consistent and don't you ever quit. There will be times where nobody shows up to your meeting. That's when most people quit. Oh my God, this network marketing thing doesn't work. I've been doing the meeting for two weeks. We had 30 people in one of these meetings. And all of a sudden, this Thursday night, I was the only one who showed up. Most people aren't tough enough to deal with it. You know who's tough enough? I'm tough enough. I'll tell you guys a quick story. I had a meeting one time. 150 people were there two weeks before. Tropicana Hotel and Casino, Las Vegas, Nevada. Two weeks later, technology was glitching. We were having hiccups. The stuff wasn't working. The company stuff wasn't working. Me and my partner, Michael, showed up at the hotel early to set up for the meeting. At 7.30, nobody showed up. 
we're asking ourselves, did we tell them a different day? Eight o'clock, we had both realized nobody's freaking here. I got so mad, and I'm not proud of myself to admit this to you. I got so mad. I used to be a professional punter in the NFL for a gl glimpse of time. So, guys, I can kick things really hard. I kicked a hotel chair so hard that it almost hit the ceiling of the ballroom we were in. I booted this chair. And my friend Michael taught me a lesson. He goes, really? This is how you're going to act when we experience defeat? And he was a mentor to me. I said, oh, I'm so man, Michael, nobody here. And he goes, so what? He goes, let's just go home and regroup tomorrow. And we did. But man, I wanted to quit so bad. I didn't quit. I tell you all these stories because I want to paint a picture for you of what really happens in this industry. This industry is tough. But if you expect to make 10, 20, 30, 50 grand a month or more residual income, do you expect it to be easy? Any of you want to get out of jail free card with this business? This ain't easy. This is not made for the faint of heart. I'll tell you that much. The rejection you deal with. I mean, I, I love painting the, the bad picture for all of you. I love telling you what you're going to go through is not going to be fun at times. But when you get to the point where your business is exploding with or without you, there is no greater feeling in the world than to look in your back office one time and look at that commission and see that you made more money in one month than you made in a year in your life. And I can't promise that to any of you. That's the hard part for me. I can't promise that that's going to happen for you. So please don't take this as a promise. But my advice to you is imagine what this team would be like if every one of us stepped up and said, I'm the one. I'm the one. It's okay to be a follower for a little while. And it's okay to follow, follow somebody as long as you're following the right person. And you're following the right person, the right people. I promise you. You're following the right people, people that know exactly how to do this and aren't afraid to tell you exactly what it's going to be like along the way. It's okay to be a follower now. But as soon as you go back to your team, you're their leader. You come here, follow. You go there, go lead. And you take these stories and you take these power quotes and you take these lessons that we teach and make them yours like I made them mine. Every one of my mentor stories, they're my stories now. I told Richard stories my whole career. People are like, oh my God, I love that story. Yeah, that's my mentor story, but I made it mine. That story of the gold bricks, anybody on the screen by show of hands ever told that story since I taught it to you? Anybody? Has anyone on here in the team told the gold brick story? Good for you, Suzanne. I hope you take these things and teach other people what you're learning because that's what it's really all about. So 950, guys, I'm going to throw it over to Annabelle and, and Suzanne to kind of run the call till the end here. We got 10 more minutes together. You guys can ask questions, open it up. Let's spend the last 10 minutes together. And then let's let's go after this business with everything you got. Take it away, ladies. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, let's give Michael a heart, everybody, or whatever you want to give him. But let's show him and express our love to him. And um, I'm telling you, this is gold. What he's teaching us is gold. And it's, like he says, it's big, big big business and when you think big you think bigger and when you have thought bigger you think bigger and bigger and bigger and when you thought bigger and bigger and bigger you think bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and when you thought bigger and 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 bigger you think bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you thought that you have thought bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, Suzanne, what do you think? Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's hard not to say booger when you do that. Michael, I was waiting for one of you to slip up. We had um, numbers are kind of floating around, but 67 business partners on today. So give yourself yeah. a hand, folks. I mean, telling you this, oh, we're, they're still coming in. Wow. So here's what I want to share with you is that if you feel like you're having one of those days where 
you're not connecting or you feel like no one's showing up. Do not isolate yourself. Reach out. You see all these faces on the screen? Don't make them just faces. We have got to connect. We need accountability, correct? Don't hold back when you're having one of those moments or days. Just reach out. We're here for you, okay? Hey, I have them. Who do I do? I call Annabelle. I call Michael. Let's talk. And and there I am. Okay. Oh, I'm, you got cereal on your face. Uh, Elsa. Yeah, that's, that's a, a hey. Uh, that's a Go that's ahead. a very very that's a powerful powerful thing Suzanne just said. My whole career, I've always had a couple people in my corner that I turn to because it's inevitable that you're going to have an emotional roller coaster in this business. Hey, Suzanne called me a few days ago and she. She wasn't her normal chipper Suzanne self. And I knew that she needed to just get some things off her chest about why the business wasn't growing. Why, why, Michael, what, what do I need to do differently? And she called me because I need to be there for her. Right. And then I picked her up. You got to pick people up. Okay. Even the motivator, even the leader needs someone to call. So sometimes I'll call somebody in my life that can pick me up when I'm having a downtime. Got to have those people in your life. Now, here's the one thing to be careful of. Don't do that with the people in your organization. It's not the time to vent to your team when you don't feel good. That's called puking downhill. Important lesson for you all to learn. Never puke downhill. Now, I don't like the word downline, but un un understand downhill means never puke on the people that you got excited in the first place. I mean, this should be common sense. Stupid transact card. We don't even have one yet. The hell's going on with the Z Club? I mean, the Z is the Z Club ever going to have more than than toilet paper and diapers in it? What the hell's wrong with the Z Club? Oh, big deal! Somebody won a shaker mug. Ooh, -hoo, that got me really excited. They're giving out uh, Avenger shake mugs, guys. It's just the beginning, but don't puke on your team with that stuff. You can think it all you want, but don't bring it to your network. There's nothing worse than vomiting on the business that you just built. It is the quickest way to defeat yourself single-handedly. Guilty. <laughs> guilty as charged don't puke on your team the only thing suzanne's gonna hear from me is positivity that's right that's if i don't right. keep if i if the leader doesn't keep it together you got a better chance to win the lottery than winning this business you got to keep it together for your team if you want to puke call somebody that is in your power team i don't even say upline call somebody above you annabelle what the hell's wrong with this thing <laughs> when are these cards gonna be ready do that all day long with the person that's in your up team that brought you in. Their job is to pick you back up and push you back out on the field and say, don't worry about it. things will be fine soon. And soon things will be fine. Never as soon as you want it to be, by the way, but soon things will be fine. That's great. Great Angie, stuff, Suzanne. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Angie, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to say thank you again to Michael for inviting me and my team here. And, you know, we're, we're, you don't benefit from, from me being part of this, but I want to tell you that, you know, you have a rock star in Amy Perkovich, and I have been blessed to lock arms with her here in Arizona. And uh, we are going to be doing this meeting today together, and we are going to saturate Arizona out here. So my way of giving back to you for what you have allowed me to be here with my team is, is to just help build yours out here as well. So again, I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you, Angie. Absolutely. Awesome, Angie. Go rock Arizona. Arizona's right. on the map right now. So we're right at... Um, almost nine o'clock. And I want to remind everybody, we have our corporate call um, with Transact Card at 930 uh, Pacific. And each of you, since you are the one, figure it out what it is is for your time zone. Okay. So thank you, Michael, so much. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you to all the leaders, Angie, Amy. I saw Jeff uh, had joined us too and he even has his camera on hey buddy welcome back from australia um yeah. love you and um all these special leaders dr linda thank you for being with us today on power rushney give me a smile sweetheart there you go esther thank you so much for being with us mark uh steve 
Brian Howard, Tanya, uh, I know you're somewhere in church probably, sweetheart. Thank you for being here, Tomas, Yeni. Uh, I love you all. Suzanne, thank you, Regina, for being on here. Uh, Casey, Denise, thank you, Laura. Come on, let's go, Laura. Clemente, uh, bienvenido. Con un nombre como Clemente, tiene que hablar español. Si pudiera prender la cámara. Shelly Martinez, love this girl. Oh my God, Shelly, love you. Thank you for being here. Claudia from Los Angeles, thank you. Yenny, hey, grandma. New grandma, Yenny, from, she's a grandma. She's not a grandma. She's like me. So thank you for being here, Deidre, um, Nicole, you guys are all important. Tommy, you guys are the one. Christy, Valentine, uh, Della, Amy, all of you. Thank you so much for being here uh, at our powwow. Uh, we will be here next Wednesday for um, our Z Team family night. We're the glue. That's where the family comes. We will welcome back our lovely Colette Daniel, who leads uh, Z Team alongside um, our mentor, Michael Zappia. So if there's any last words, Suzanne, you want to close it out. And um, I'm embracing each and every one of you. And just remember, we're here to serve and uh, reach out, puke up, not down, and just be the positive life and the representation of Transact Card. Just think that beautiful green, and that green is abundance, you guys. Embrace it, hold it, and uh, be out there sharing the vision with your heart. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that it'll come tenfold back to you. So thank you. You wanna say a few words, Suzanne? And uh, I'm good. I just wanna thank you all very much for taking the time to um, really, um, Pour into yourself. This is what Michael does is when we show up, we're, we're vessels, right? Take everything, you know, take notes. Uh, Brian, I'll get this over to you. We'll have this posted up on our, uh, on our uh, family site, YouTube site. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And remember it's, you know, I, I always tell you, it's not about me. It's like, who, who am I going to cross paths with that? I can, as Michael has taught us, a path changer. We never know what people are walking through in life, correct? So just take the time. I know it's challenging sometimes, but let's just reach out, smile to someone. I'm telling you, just, um, and that's going to be part of, I'd say this week, how many people, as Michael says, how many people did I talk to today? You know, who did I reach out to? It takes time to build a relationship. But um, again, um, I'm thrilled to be a part of this family and um, I'll see you all next time. Thank you, yep. Michael. Okay. And so everybody on you and just say goodbye. Or whoever <laughs> Thank, has you to Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 You guys, see you at 9.30. Oh, okay. Bye. Happy Bye, Saturday. Have a blessed day. You too. Let me Enjoy see. your day. Woo-hoo. So let's see.